Okay, hello, hello, hello. We are live at Cav HQ. We are in the middle of disaster, trying to get everything ready at the last minute. Uh, but we're getting there. But James is here yes. in the flesh. Finally. So uh, we are together. Um, we kind of had to hodgepodge our system together a little bit. Um, we're moving things around for uh, the show this weekend. Um, anyway, so we're going to talk a little bit about the show. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the schedule a little bit. I know that I was supposed to have that up where you could actually see it physically today. Um, uh, morning, the something got in the way, and I lost about a half a day today. So um, that I wasn't expecting. That's what it is. Uh, technically, just so so nobody thinks it's nefarious, is I had to go to traffic court this morning, and uh, they they do it on Zoom, and they email me a time uh, for me to be there. So I thought it was like oh, I'm gonna log in, meet the judge, go from there, and be done. Well, as it turns out, everybody that's gets the same invite. So I was in a Zoom room with 50 people. And since my last name is Walker, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was at the bottom of the pile. So uh, four hours later, three and a half hours later, I was done with traffic court. So I had not intended on spending all morning doing that, but that's what I So it is what it is. Move along. Mayor uh, Dude is excited Mayor for the Dude Kodiak. is the Kodiak, yes. Those will be... Um, those are supposed to go up today as well. Huh, stop getting but, arrested. But traffic court, <laughs> traffic court got in the way. So uh, I, I'm trying to squeeze those in tomorrow. Yeah. Cert law and order sound. Exactly, That's exactly. Right. I was I was a bad boy. So uh, so anyway, so it's kind of it's it wouldn't be a Allen Games production. Without everything coming apart at the end, but we'll get through it. It might it, we may have some rough spots, but we're good. Um, so we're going to that we're gonna have a busy tomorrow, yes. <laughs> but we're gonna be there. We will be there. It may not be the most professional show, but it'll be better than our last one. So that's that's a big. I don't. I don't think the last show was terrible. Well, I mean, just with the things we're doing, yeah. and everything. Be more people. So, um, so let's talk about the schedule. Uh, the show is going to start Friday at 10 a.m. And we are going to run officially till 8 p.m. But we're going to have, we'll explain how that's going to um, work. I, I was witness. Yeah, well, unfortunately, I think everybody that was supposed to show at traffic court today on mine was there. Way too many B's and C's last names. Uh, so anyway, we're going to kick off each morning. Uh, we're going to have an hour. Welcome to the day. Mm -hmm. This is what it is. So we're going to talk about some of the stuff. Um, Saturday and Sunday morning, we'll also talk about stuff that happened from the day before and, and things like that. Um, and then after that first hour, we'll go into the, so, um, um, I know that we've got on Friday, we've got a, a game session. Um, we're going to have, um, a couple of things that we're doing here as far as demos, things like that. Um, and then party bear. Uh, him on here in just a second. Oh, Party Bear Minis. He's got a couple hours that he's going to be doing some painting. Um, I think he's got he's got four hours that he's mm -hmm. doing through the whole weekend. So like the, two hours on Friday and two mm -hmm. hours on Sunday, and each hour is going to be a different mini. So he's painting four different minis. Nice so mini in an, in an hour. <clears throat> mini That's in an hour. Impressive. I, I I got a lot to learn. Yes, paint time. And then starting as we go into the evening. Uh, Chris from Thunderhead Studios mm -hmm. is going to, to go on live and he is going to 
go as long as he wants to go. Okay. So he may, uh, he'll go past the eight o'clock time. So we'll be, he'll kind of take over from the rest of the evening and he may go nine, 10, I don't know, but he'll be here however long he wants to be. So he, he finishes off Friday night. Uh, Saturday again, we'll start off with our preview show. Um, we've got games, we've got, um, Todd's going to be here. He's going to be doing a little airbrush demo uh, a couple of times. Um, Hugh, um, Tiger Wraith is going to be here. He is going to do a, um, conversion, uh, class, um, cause he so. like, he likes to cut up stuff. Um, and then, uh. James, or well, Chris, Chris will be Lewis, here yeah. Saturday. He'll be working. He, I, he's just going to do a one-hour show. Who is he? So he's going to be, uh, he'll be here at his regular time at 2 o'clock, but he'll go 2 to 3. Okay. Um, and then um, James Wapple will be on from 3 to 5 o'clock. In the morning, probably. Crazy. <laughs> well, this, uh, he, he's actually, his feed is going to start at 3 o'clock Saturday afternoon, 3 p.m. Uh, we're going to share that broadcast for a couple hours. Then we're going to switch back uh, mm -hmm. and do some things that we are supposed to do here. Uh, James will actually continue to broadcast on his channel mm -hmm. for those three hours. And then at eight o'clock, we will switch his feed back into our feed. Mm -hmm. And he's just going to go as long as he, he wants may to go. be midnight, one o'clock. Yeah. So I mean, he, he literally streams for nine hours at a time. He's, he, he's full of content. Um, Chris, uh, Thunderhead Studios and James uh, will be their own stream that we will host through ours. Yes. yes. So that's that's how those will be done. But you'll be able to stay here and do the whole thing uh, through us other than the three hours that James will continue with his show, but we'll be right. doing our thing. Um, then we have... Sunday, we'll start off again with our preview show, talk about things that we did from the day before. Um, Party Bear's got a couple hours that he's going to be doing stuff. Uh, we have a new artist, um, Michael, that will be Sunday. He mm -hmm. is from Well Forged Minis, I think is what he calls his okay. stuff. Um, and he is going to do an hour-long class on battle damage, Bad. how to do battle damage on, and take questions and stuff like that. So, uh, so he will be here on Sunday for that. Uh, and like I said, I will get uh, the hard list up tomorrow and have everything listed so you'll see what those are so you'll know ahead of time. Um, and then we will, uh, then we've got some classes here. We've got a game session. Mm -hmm. We'll finish off and, and the show will end at eight o'clock on Sunday. So we'll be. We're in there, we're going to get to see Cab Ball. We're good, right. We've got we for games. We've got uh, we've got cav ball. We've got uh, learn to play. Uh, we're actually going to have one or two games being played on the mm -hmm. desert board, um, depending on how that how that goes, time wise. Um, we'll probably split that game up over a couple of sessions, uh, play a couple hours, mm -hmm. uh, move into some other things, and just leave everything set up and come back in and play a couple of more hours. That'll be the rather than start over every time or something. But we'll, we'll get all that, the, the full list. Um, I meant to print it out before I came upstairs. To this. Um, submissions are due by 6 or 8 o'clock. I think it's 8 o'clock. Yeah, the Sunday. end of the show. Yeah, yeah. I think by the end of the show. I know that so far, I haven't got very many. I, I, I know lots of people keep saying that they're painting and stuff like that, but uh, I, I, uh, I checked the, the, the box again today and it, there was nothing in there. It's maybe everybody's waiting to Let's the last Let's make sure minute. people know how to submit. Let's tell them they, they know what to do to submit their stuff. Right. They need to, all you need to do is, uh, <clears throat> if you look at the, um, there's three categories. There's single figure, there is squad, and there is diorama. Um, I, it, I believe you can go to the cav-cavcon.com. Double check. I don't know. Right quick here. And look while we're here, because I think that will take you to stuff you need.
Okay, so if you go to cav-con.com, C-O-N dot C-O-M, uh, forward slash paint expo, that will give you all the information that you need there at the bottom, the categories, who to send it to. Um, no, it is at 6 p.m. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, Sunday, March 28th at 6 p.m. that we need to have everything in. Um, the only thing that I'm worried about is if you, everybody waits to the last second and blows up the mailbox before we have a chance to clean it out, you may get um, a kickback. So if you do hold tight, I'll be trying to check it as much as I can to keep it um, cleared out. So, because it's funny, because with some of the pictures that I've got, I get nice little 200 kilobyte mm -hmm. pictures, and then I've got a couple of six meg. Big one. Yeah. So, um, John, I want you to see the detail on my cockpit. Look at this, John. Yes. Ah. I think I can put this in chat. There we go. There you go. So if you go there, that's got all the instructions you need there at the bottom. Already got his in, but yes. you may get more. No, I already got I already got Gimli's in. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. So yeah, submissions due by six o'clock Sunday. Yes, if you have them ready and they're done, please go ahead and get them submitted because, like I said, if everybody hits the mailbox at 6 o'clock, you're going to have some congestion problems. Maybe a little bit. Let's, let's go back up a minute ago. Artie Bear Minis said he put all his painting talent points in display. Not sure it's entirely true. I've seen your paint jobs. They look pretty good. I don't think they're all just speed. I think you may have gotten a few points that spilled over into quality as well, but... Yeah, that's uh, that's my antithesis. You, we are like opposites. We are, uh, yeah. But like I said, he's he's got he's four different schemes, four different minis. It'll be interesting. I'm, to I'm see, excited to see watch. what he's got there. I, I'm basically so. doing nothing this weekend except watching you guys paint. That's what I want to do. We, we've tried to make it so that it's not the me and James show so much for three Thanks. days. You'll get plenty of us regardless, but good. it'll be good. Um. There's also, there's going to be an hour of, of um, kind of uh, the preview hour where we're going to talk a little bit about things that we're working on and too. We'll have that, that up on there. Um, we should have the swag bags and the, the new minis and everything up tomorrow, listed tomorrow. Um, I'm sorry that it didn't get done sooner, but that it kind of got out of my control because... Mm -hmm trying to wait for everything to be here so that people can order at one time and meet any requirements for shipping, free shipping. That's that's on me, but we'll get there. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. There's too much of that. We need some Todd and some Tiger Wraith up in here. Trigger end. He's ready to buy. I'm... Where, where, where's the purchase button? The badger, I, the, the badger will be up too. Oh um, so I've got to get, I've got to get it all up in there. And um, it's just like I said, I I lost a half day today, so I it's gonna, I've got to squeeze a half day into tomorrow mm -hmm. with everything that I was gonna do tomorrow. Um, probably gonna get a lot of stuff that's gonna be done at six or seven o'clock Friday morning. <laughs> Good Lord. I have a feeling I'll get there. Here's what's really going to happen. John's going to get arrested for some infraction in court, and it's going to be me and Todd and Hugh trying to run this show while we bail John out. That's what's really going to happen. Well, luckily, everything got pushed off till May, so I'm probably okay from that point, but there's no telling what else will happen. Uh, it starts at 10 a.m., Friday morning. It actually starts at 10 a.m. every day, Friday, Saturday, and mm -hmm. Sunday. That is Central Time. So um, that's where we'll be. Uh, Saturday will probably be our biggest day with everybody. But Friday, there's still people working. So on defense fund. Yep, yep. To, that's what we need. You have no idea how how many people, and I know that keep a. a extra money just to bail me out from time to time. Blues Brothers in Space. Got 
four hours to get there, two packs of smoke, and a full tank of gas. <clears throat> and then we will go, like I said, the, the official end of the show each day is 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. Central Time. But both Friday night, uh, Thunderhead Studios is going to go past that. And then James Wapple will be on Saturday night. Um, and he he's he's going he'll go to midnight or one at least. Uh, he is, uh, and I was talking to him a little bit uh, earlier today. Um, he has got all kinds of things planned, Mr. Wapple. Mr. Wapple, I'm he, he's, excited. He's not gonna. You're not gonna have to watch eight hours of him sitting there work on one mini. Yeah, no, no, no. He's no. he's gonna be working on oil paints. He's gonna be doing talking about cockpits. He's gonna be painting minis. He's gonna do basing. The the list was I mean he he is the show Saturday, so we look forward to that. Um, but it is all Cav for the day. James has been a longtime Cav supporter. Um, I met him years ago at at Depticon. Um, he came up and and I, he was like a puppy dog mm -hmm. with all the new cow. We just come out with all the new calves and. He, he was all over. He had um, got a couple of them from somewhere or whatever, and already painted them up mm -hmm. and brought them up to show me. And, and James is a great. So mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate his support this week. So he's got plenty of stuff to show off. And then uh, this weekend, margaritas. Margaritas. We have drive-through <laughs> margaritas. On, I'm sorry <laughs> that you won't be here for that. Um, I'll drink yours for you. Well, we'll, right. we'll keep two or three of them on a row there. We'll, uh, with with all of us being here, uh, maybe I can talk uh, Miss Cav Boss into being the, uh, keep them rolling. <laughs> the driver. Um, yeah. Bring one every 10 minutes till somebody passes out, then bring one every five minutes. Yeah. And then, yeah. It does sound like the Blues bro. Yes. <laughs> It's a party. It's a party. So no, I'm excited for it. It'll be nice with everybody here. It's mm -hmm. been the last year. I, I feel like a, a shut in uh, with uh, leprosy or something. Seriously. Yeah. It's, it's been a while since we've been out the way. So uh, any other, anybody have any questions? Please let us know. We, uh, We've got some things we'll talk about over the weekend that mm -hmm. we, we don't want to spill the beans on yet. Secrets. Some, some things, so we'll kind of there. So you'll be able to learn stuff. Uh, we are going to have some giveaways. Um, I'm not 100% sure how we're going to do it yet. Um, mm -hmm. So I've got two or three modes in, in the deal. It was hard to keep up with it last mm -hmm. time. It was new. Yeah, so... Uh, and also, we're going to have it so that you don't have repeat. <laughs> <laughs> Cthulhu wants to win it all. Come I on, now. I, I think we'll limit it to one per day. So, and technically, you would be able to win something once every day for three days. Wardens are not going. To no, win the warden one. bees are not going to be up. No, it's uh, the um, Kodiak and the the Mamba. Did the models come first or the game? The models. We built, uh, we built, well, I guess there's those four, but that, that's there, but there was actually six models that got built originally. Um, that there, the dictator, the specter, um, tyrant, Yeah, Vanquisher. Well, I don't know. That was before yeah. my time, John. Yeah, but the so yeah, so we actually we built those models first, um, and then uh, then went and did the rules. It it was a funny deal because me and Ed put that together, and uh, I was over at his house, and we did that in over a weekend. That we laid that out and and or put that together and and uh, 
had that. No, the Rhino, the Rhino came out later. Like I said, I know the big four, the original four, it was the Dictator, the Spectre, the Vanquisher, and the Tyrant. And then there's two others that came out that I, are, are we may not even, even <laughs> I don't remember what. The, Hedgehog. The Hedgehog was the very first 3D printed model that was done. Um, the, the original four, six cows were all, those were hand sculpted. Um, but the hedgehog was the original 3D one. And that's the reason it looks the way that it does. Because we literally downloaded a copy of Rhino hmm. software and started playing with that. And the only thing that everybody could figure out how to do was squares. <laughs> so, it's a bunch of boxes so that's the reason together. the hedgehog is all boxes because we didn't know how to do anything else but squares. I own like 20 of those. Yeah. Crazy. So, so that's how how that came about. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, we put that we put that together that that uh, that booklet, and at the time we were still doing catalogs all the time, mm -hmm. and they were printed on kind of a bleached. So we we had planned on that was that that eight page handout was we were gonna give them away and send them and everywhere. It would be like, so we needed thousands of them. So we went to our same uh, catalog printer. We printed those. So it's kind of, it's it's newsprint, but it's not newsprint. It's more, it's a little. I was asking about. Were the original cow bottles intended to be used for the game that Shelby? No, they were not. They were made strictly for, we had already planned on doing cab and, and going from there. So, honestly, they're big for. They were, yeah. Well, originally, um, the the original intention of them there was they were to be twelve millimeter, which was in scale. So that so they were they were scaled to be a little bit bigger because of the having the Vega Blue train and everything. Um, that didn't always work out. <laughs> there was. The scale kind of did this, so yes. there was stuff bigger, stuff smaller, and everything like that. Um, there's also um, ten different people. You asked ten different people. Scale is a yes. different answer. We've had that conversation. Yeah. So uh, when it came time, uh, when I was redoing the minis and releasing the minis, uh, that's the reason. I, one of the reasons I went with ten millimeter. Is a it was a growing scale and a lot of people were doing some stuff with it at the time, but also it was kind of an, in the middle of the road enough mm -hmm. that we were trying to keep from redoing a lot of stuff early. So, uh, so that's 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 the reason I went with the scale that we. So, I, I think I've made the comment now. In hindsight, I wish we had done fifteen millimeter, did bigger stuff. At That'd the time when, yeah, at the time when we were <clears throat> releasing and redoing this, we were trying to save our pennies. We only had so much we didn't, yeah. didn't want to do a bunch of new models. I mean, think metal. Well, but you know, back then it was dirt cheap. Oh yeah, I mean, we were paying. I think for a, back then when we first did cab, I think metal was like dollars a pound. So you know, you could get. Four, five minis out of a pan, calves and stuff. Um, but that's one of the things that that did the original calf in mm -hmm. was metal went up through the roof. In my head, I can't remember the exact timing of when lead stopped being material version. Well, computer version became a thing. Did how how how. How did that transition in the beginning of Kev? Well, right there, <clears throat> mid-90s, 96, 97, what got it all started is the state of New York uh, got it in their mind that they were going to do this lead ban and, and all these things and everything like that. Um, the minis always have had a little bit of tin in them. Um, they were prime, but there was more lead to them at the time, but the tin helped them be defined. Um, so there at the time there was in the, in the industry, there was the feeling that this was going to become the norm. So everybody started coming up with their own 
new mixes and things mm -hmm. like that. And uh, some were mixes were better than others. I know uh, <laughs> Ralph Parth had tried to do their Relidium uh, uh, mix, and that, that was a <laughs> done. Um, well, you know, and here's the funny thing, and that, and that was one of the things that has been brought up, is by the time that this had, was all coming into place, um, I had been casting minis, working, doing things for, I don't know, four or five years. Hmm. Um, we ate around the shop, we, you know, we, we had it, on, we were breathing it, we were on mm -hmm. the deal and everything like that. But also, one of the partners, uh, Al Perry, uh, he was originally with Heritage Miniature, which is like the very first miniature company, you know, back in the day. And so, you know, he, I mean, he had been in 20 or 30 years, I, don't, I mean, forever. But we had, uh, we had a person, a nurse come in and draw blood and do uh, iron or uh, uh, lead tests on all of us. And... Even Al, I, it wasn't even, it was barely, barely hmm. readable. It hmm. was well below whatever, what basically what a normal person would right. have anyway. <clears throat> so, you know, and that was after all those years. And, and yeah, obviously, <clears throat> you know, you didn't want to be chewing it, you know, and everything like that. But like I said, it was, you know, it's not like we were going around in right. hazmat suits or anything right. like that. I mean, it was, you'd go out there and work and, then I'd go in and grab a sandwich and eat lunch, you know. So it was it was all good, but but uh, so we started switching to to tin, a majority of a tin mix with mm -hmm. a little bit of lead in it. So you know, early on, you know, you might have been lead might have been seventy eighty percent, and the rest of it was tin and some other some other metals, and then it kind of made that switch. Mm -hmm. It was more seventy or eighty percent tin. 10% lead and, and the other one. <clears throat> so, but at the time, it, like I said, tin was cheap. Um, what killed the, the metal mi miniature industry is gold, all things. And you would ask, how would gold <laughs> do that? Well, here's what happens is you have people that are, they buy futures, they buy, buy things or whatever. Well, for a long time, gold was $300, $400 an ounce. And then all of a sudden, gold started growing, and it got up to $1,600, $1,700 an ounce of gold. Well, the, these guys that would buy futures and buy gold and sell gold and stuff like that, the ability you know, to really make money, you had to buy a lot of gold. It didn't do you no good to buy 10 ounces of gold and it go up $10, and, and you make $100, but it cost you $30,000 just to buy, you know. So for the way for them to make money is they needed to buy tens and hundreds of, of ounces at a time and then they'd go up and they would sell that. Well, a lot of people couldn't do that. A lot of people didn't want to tie up the money and everything. So they started looking around for another metal <laughs> that they could do this. And and they did it in other things. They, they, they did it in electricity. They did it in all kinds of stuff. But tin at the time, uh, there most of the tin in the world is mined in Indonesia. So uh, tin became the new, the poor man's gold. So they looked and, oh, here is tin at $2 a pound. So you're talking, you know, what, 30 cents an ounce, whatever, $2 divided by 15 works out. And almost overnight, it went from $2 to $17 a pound. So you had people, I mean, there had to have been Dozens of people that made millions of overnight. And it's one of those things that, <clears throat> kind of like gas, you know, once that price gets up there hmm. and they and they say, oh, people are going to keep paying it. We're not, they're not going to go back it's down. Not going okay. Back. So, uh, you know, they, they, that's what happened. The speculators got into the tin industry because they couldn't afford to do gold anymore. And that eventually, I mean, that's what killed the, 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 the metal miniatures. So it's unfortunate, and you know, for a while, uh, people could, uh, you know, that's minis went up. I mean, I, I think when we originally started, uh, the f the first figures that we had sculpted originally for the Dark Heaven line, fantasy line, 
there was eight or ten of them. I think those retailed for like a dollar dollar sixty nine dollar fifty dollar sixty that and and I think at, by the time that the with the whole metal thing was done like that, I think they were re mean something like that i mean and so and those have you know a normal fantasy figure is maybe. I mean, they're half an ounce. I mean, they're not really super heavier. But, uh, but yeah, but you get into the calves, um, those got heavy quick. So, and so, so uh, to, to summarize, what I think I heard you say was that I think calf models were first made after that. So there were never lead calves. Yes, there were. There were. Yeah, originally when we very first started doing them, they were... Uh, there, there was more lead in them than. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and then, but we, as that came out, we made that transition yeah. into the tin, and it came more. But then, when that tin thing hit, hmm. overnight, you know, the minis we'd been selling for six and seven dollars, be twelve, thirteen. You get up into the emperor, or mm -hmm. four ounces of metal, or something like yeah. that. You know, th they became twenty and thirty dollar. That's 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 literally true. So 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 when I discovered Cav, I came late to the game, and so. Um, I was hunting down shops that had old cab models laying around that they hadn't sold in a while. And I found a store that had an old emperor. I paid $30 for it because it was, it was like a quarter of a pound of metal. Right. And, and that's actually, and that it's, you bring up that, that P65 line. Um, <clears throat> that's what, that's what that was. That was a predominantly going back to more of a, of a lead. It, 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 I think he's got P95, P95 but it, it was actually P60 because it was 65% lead. lead okay. uh, so um, by mixing the lead back in there, we got the price because at this point, the whole lead thing was, as far as miniatures, it kind of blown. Okay. The, the, so we did that. At that. That was about the same time right after that that I acquired the game. So that was about 20... Um, oh, about 2010, right in there is is there we might they might have been doing it a little bit earlier, and that was one of the things that was when we had the first redo of pricing, is because we were I had we were switching the calves over to that P65 line, so that brought the prices back down and we could be a little more reasonable and we were selling direct so that that kind of helped too. Um, but the same problem that Reaper had with the P65 is what we had to deal is because of the conversations that were already being had, people immediately heard yeah. lead and were done. I, they didn't want to have nothing to do with them. And, and, and it's unfortunate um, that it happened, but it is what it was. And so um, they discontinued that. Uh, we were still casting the calves right up until... Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what brought about the, the first plastic calves is uh, Reaper did the very first Kickstarter. And we're, I'm down there one day, we're sitting around and stuff like that, and they're getting stuff ready to send over to have molds and everything like that. And we decided to have, hey, let's see how calves will do. So we, I picked out eight models, and we sent over there, and those were the original the eight white ones that were done. Um, they were done in the softer plastic and uh, they came back and, and obviously uh, they, they were somewhat different, you know, and, and, and with more of the floppiness and, and whatnot. Um, but, but at the price, the price exactly. I mean, we weren't, <clears throat> these were not being done in order for you to uh, necessarily to be painting for competition level stuff. It was just like playing with army men. You, mm -hmm. you just, you know, we were throwing them out there and, and they'd go. Um, and we didn't, we had a lot to learn about plastic. I mean, we were learning as we were going. And um, so we didn't know the right questions to ask and things that we do. So uh, those original white ones were well, what we had, we did as the uh, if you were an early bird backer on the first Kickstarter, you got the eight one eight calves cool. set out right 
right away. There was four of each, so you got 32 cows right away. Um, but when they were the actual ones that we sent out with the Kickstarter that are in gray, hmm. that's not the same plastic. Right, it's a right. it's a more it's a more durable plastic. So yeah, definitely. I've I've, I've got a few of the early white ones, and yes, they're just completely different in terms of their structure. So 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 here's my little bit of story. So so I, I came to Cab about 2017. I went down to ReaperCon, got a demo from Colonel Kane, who's in chat. Thank you very much, Colonel. Um, fell in love with the game, and I took a tour of the plant or the the manufacturing facility. Right. Was over. And of course, they have kind of at least at that time back in the back corner, they had bins of miniatures. And so, uh, one of the things you can do at ReaperCon, at least you, in the past, you could is you could trade in old models. They would give you credit in the material weight to go and get stuff out of their bins. So I traded in a bunch, of and. Um, I found the cab bin. Like, holy, holy. So I went through those things and I just took one of everything I could possibly find. I remember Ed saying, I heard him say as I was weighing out and checking out, he was glad somebody had found those and gotten into them. Because they, they were, we were, were going to melt them. They were getting melted yeah. like the next week. Yeah. And so I was like the last person to get my hands on those, apparently. They had asked me the week before about yeah. that. And I said, oh, well, I said, we're switching to plastic. Mm -hmm. I said, well, the metal is just not going to work anymore. Melt away. Yeah. And they so did, because went. the next year when I went down there, there were no cab bits anywhere. Correct. No, no there, was, hedgehog. there was much, much uh, <laughs> gnashing of teeth, I'm sure. But yeah, there was a lot, a lot of stuff. And, you know, from time to time, I mean, they still, uh, Reaper has always done a program where you could trade out mm -hmm. um, as a retailer. Mm -hmm. You know, if you bought, you had $300 worth of pennies that after you've been selling them and you just couldn't sell them or whatever, you can put them in a box, send them to Reaper, Reaper processes them, gives you back that in retail credit that you can buy in, in other different. figures. Yeah. Right. So... I don't think it happens nearly as much anymore because I kind of got work. But there for a long time, you'd have mm -hmm. a store send in, you know, eight, $900 yeah. worth of cab mini straight out for fantasy. And they all went straight to the ah! Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. It is what it is. I'll I, be honest with you. I, I've become a fan of... I, I used to, you know, I, so I've been doing miniatures... For a very, very, very long time. And so for a long time, I was a metal guy, and I loved metal miniatures. And when you started to get a few plastic miniatures, day, I have completely converted over. Yeah. So I look at your Kodiak and Gordon over there and Hind over there. Right. I'm just like, Well, and, and again, it's so good. we've learned mm -hmm. how to use the material. Um, Kickstarter one, the stuff in Kickstarter two was twice as mm -hmm. good. The stuff in Quick Sorcerer was twice as good as two, mm -hmm. you know. And um, you know, really, I, I think in Kickstarter three we had it dialed in. You did. Um, yes. I think you still get some figures that, that that maybe have a little bin here or there, but that's just more because of the way it was packaged or how it set in the deal like that. But because of the stiffness, they were very easy to straighten out, and they would stay straight. Um, so, you know, I, you know, I, I have no, I would have had no problem with continuing with the process. Mm -hmm. of and, and that was the plan to go forward once we had come up with that. But. Discovery. Well, it wasn't so much the discovery. It was just with all the things that were happening and mm -hmm. with China and tariffs and, and everything like that, the writing was on the wall that this could overnight mm -hmm. turn into a disaster yeah, you're not getting and, anything. and we're not going to get anything or or we think was going to cost so much that we would just we could do it here in the u.s but still yeah. all of a sudden now you're pay, paying metal prices for it. so um but luckily we have stumbled across the dual cast, dual cast material yeah. and uh you know i those are pretty happy i'm excited with them. i'm pretty I, happy I, with them Hopefully this isn't out of place, but I just want to share with, with the audience I've seen the dual cast <laughs> machine. It is 
it is a reality. So I don't know what the time frame is before we start getting our monthly addiction satisfied directly from Talent Game, but the future is close. It's yes. very, very close. We have everything now in house. We're we're ready. It's we're going to have. We've got a little bit of a learning curve mm -hmm. um, because we are producing our molds in house. Um, the actual process of casting the figures is relatively simple. The making the molds <laughs> is not. Colonel Kane. <laughs> Second Tuesday of next week. Yeah. No, I, I don't know that that's going to happen. But I would, uh, I would really expect May. May is, May is going to be sometime in May. You'll probably see our first. I mean, officially, we've got the. Yep. The Kodiak and the uh, the Mamba will be our kind of our deal, but um, once we once we get our processes yeah. down and, and and have learned what we need to learn, I think everybody will be happy. Yeah, the Kodiak and the Mamba are kind of a pilot run, and then when you get into full production, that's when we're going to start getting release or two every month, hopefully yes. going forward. Yeah, no, we will definitely get to. I mean, my 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 plan is to is is two figures, two new figures, two new figures. Yeah. So so I know we've been over this before, but I sleep in a mold and I forget. So is there any plan to go backwards? So no. like like the duelist? Are we going to get a dual cast version of the duelist? Well, okay, so maybe maybe okay. Uh, I will say anything that was in Kickstarter three is at the absolute bottom of the yeah, list. Because there's okay, because they're already models. they're dialed in and they're those good. Those things to go. are good. Uh, Kickstarter one stuff yeah. is up to the top. the The problem that we have, I mean, it's it's a good problem, but and it's already kind of fixing itself. Is when we purchase those figures from China, we have to buy them in. Okay, so it's not like we got five hundred of them. You mm -hmm. know, we've got thousands. So we have to we have to work through that that, yeah, yeah, that level. Yeah. Kickstarter one stuff is running out. We we've got models on there are none anymore, and and so those are uh, is what you're going to start seeing come in like the new Despot. Mm -hmm. Um, but they are not going to be recasts. So we're not going to go back and take that one mm -hmm. and just throw it in. <coughs> Um, so we will, we will do an updated version that will become a variant, just like right. we did with the yeah. Despot. Yeah. You've got the original Despot and then you got the Despot B. Okay. Ooh. And they, that way we're not invalidating your right. figures. Right. Okay. Right. Whatever you originally have that, that Despot from Kickstarter one, those are the Despot. Okay. So that, so that's how that'll go. But, but, uh. We are starting to work Kickstarter one. So. I'm excited. Gosh, I'm excited. Uh, you guys aren't here, so you can, it's really hard to see this, but man, here's this Mamba. It's going to be up for I'm not going to bother trying to make it visible on the camera. Just take my word for it. This is a spectacular model. Yes. This thing is I freaking have, awesome. I have a desert rat scenario you know, in mind. I'm I totally mean, I, it's just all. Yeah. So it's, that may be a before a lot of people. Right. Well, we'll okay. make you. We'll make you guys like Desert Rat. Go look it up on YouTube. Yes. You'll enjoy it. Yeah. Great show. Great show. It was a great show. Oh, man. So much to do. Yes. Speaking <laughs> of, you know, because I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I love World War II. The old, uh, George Siegel died yesterday. Yes. And the... for people that don't necessarily know that, uh, the longest day. He was ranger. They, it seemed like all the who's who back then mm -hmm. had these little bits, you know, part of it. Um, but he was in The Longest Day, which is one of my favorite movies. So I was very sorry, very sorry to hear that. But uh, uh, we say do more. Of World War II. I mean, the ones they do, I think, are really good. But and it's like westerns. They don't do westerns anymore. I love westerns. Not, not very much. It is. It is. No, every once in a blue moon, something will come up. Like now, all the westerns, are all mark. Up. <laughs> yeah, seriously, you have to go to the, the grit channel. Yes, the, the hey, how, I hate, 
they're fighting over love with their horse or something. So, so, so for instance, there are a bunch of old movies out there that are, they made good movies back in the day. The, yeah. man, the man Who Shot Liberty Valance. That's a fantastic movie. They don't make movies like they used to anymore. Right. It, it's, it's all, it's formulas. Oh, and there, every once in a while you get something kind of out of the blue that ends up being good. out of the deal and it turns out pretty good. Being said, I, I'm, I'm not complaining. I like the new formulas. But, They're just yeah. different. Like Falcon and Winter Soldier, I'm really happy with that. I just, I, I think that I don't feel, I don't know. It just seems we just don't have the, the Spartacus, and the, you know, the epic <sighs> movies. I don't know. Uh, last Western I saw in the theater was Open Range. Yep. That was, that was good. That was a good show. Um, did you see that I was going to be appearing in the talking? Did you see that? Did Did you not watch the at, if you catch the end uh, in the credits as yeah, they're running through John the deal? Walker. No, no, I'm in the movie. Are you? I'm the new Captain America. You're the new Captain America. I am. I had to add an H to my name. Did you? Okay. Yeah, that's my stage name. Yep. Yeah. So All if right. you see the H in my name, that's me. On that's my movie movie place. Yeah, I am the new Captain America. But what you're really saying is. You, were a villain. That guy's clearly going to be a villain. No, he's not. He's the villain. No, he's not. Just wait. He's a U.S. agent. Don Walker. So, at the very least, he's going to be, he's certainly not a hero. He is. He, he is actually a West Coast Avenger. In I, that show, I'm not, I don't, yeah. He's not the hero. I don't know. I don't know that they may, they may have changed that. But in the comic books, mm -hmm. yeah, he is a U.S. agent. This mm -hmm. is okay. So, but I can't tell you, you can't how, tell how, me how, it's how, come how it was done come because on, John. there was some uh, paperwork signed, some confidentiality. <laughs> but you'll see me with the. You, it'll be hard to tell me with the mask, yeah. and, and I and I had to work out with me and. The work, Chris yeah, Hindley, yeah, yeah. I did some work with him, so he tightened me up for the series. Oh, I and, believe it completely. Yeah. And, and then it, they did that, that that thing they did with the hobbits from Lord of the Rings, yeah. where they shrunk you down shrunk about a foot down, and a half. Shrunk me down. <laughs> do, you, do you know that the guy that's playing that, though, that is uh, Kurt Russell's boy. I didn't know that. Goldie Hawn and I Kurt Russell's boy. I had no idea. Yep. So. I'm excited to see where it goes. Yep. I, I enjoyed the first episode. I did, too. I did, too. I felt... I mean, and I and I liked WandaVision, mm -hmm. but I, and and we've talked about that a little. Bit. I, I by the time I got done, I felt like Sinead. Or, or, I mean, there was good parts in it, but yeah. it just it was much more of a building thing. Whereas this so far seems like it maybe it's more a story that. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I I think the WandaVision story is going to continue yeah. into the Doctor Strange movie and get settled up there, where this thing is going to start and stop. Yeah. For the most part, right, right there on the do. But I'm okay with that. No, I'm good. I enjoyed it. Uh, the True Grit remake. Yeah, um, it was good. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, I'm a big John Wayne guy, so that was a hard deal. But I like Jeff Bridges too, yeah. and I think that. I think he made it his movie. Right. I, I think it was, you know, he didn't try to be John Wayne. I mean, so he, he made his own movie. I think as a, you know, and they went with a kind of a more of a different story. That part of it. There's some movies, though, that they just, they remake it. You know, it's like some movies that were made the first time probably should. Be well, that's true. You, know, that's true. Just, you can never hit a pitch you don't swing at. And then so, the and then the the ones that they add to or stuff. I'd love to see another Tron movie. I love the the redone. The oh really? Tron. Yeah. You I enjoyed that? I like that whole techno mm -hmm. that kind yeah. of that it all works together. I mean, I'm, separately I'm not real up, but the way that it goes and put that together. <clears throat> I'm excited. Um, in early April, our local our favorite local theater in Tulsa. Is going to open back up just in time for us to go see the 
So just just to put it out there, I am a Godzilla guy. Kong is got got Godzilla. Just, King Kong is just there to get bitten and punched. And I Magnificent Seven remake was it was worth a watch, but it wasn't like the original. It was just it, it it didn't have that epic feel to it. Dun, dun, dun. So what did you think about uh, what was it Fury? Did you, so that let's yes. go back to the World War Two movie. Yes. Right? So that's a relatively new, not a remake World War Two movie that I thought was really. What that Hanks movie, Save It Private Ryan. Right? I have not been able to see his. Have you seen the I one where he's on the great, thing? Great. Because they, they did it on it's Apple. Apple exclusive, yes. and I'm not signing up for yeah. Apple to watch. They'll release it at some point. You may be able to get it on DVD. I th I meant to check Netflix and see if I could add that to my description right. just long enough to get that DVD to watch. I've been busy yeah. painting. I'm at time. No, um, that's that's what I'm I'm looking forward to because I yes. I mean I loved him in Big and Yeah, he Tom did a great job. He does really well with those sort of understated. So much response, you know. He's 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 just really good at capturing that sort of God. I have a terrible job to do, but I've got to end up under. Yeah, no, he's no you'll re and I think that's part of too is where is we don't have the actors that we had in the fifties, sixties that were bigger than life. We've yeah. got there's some. I mean, there's the Tom Hanks and stuff mm -hmm. that you know, of Robert De Niro and stuff like that, but we don't have the movie. We don't have the John Wayne, James Cons, mm -hmm. you know, and the stuff. I mean, Jake, oh, cause, of course, a lot of them are still alive. But, or Kirk Douglas. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Kirk Douglas just walked into a scene and just kaboom, this was, he was, a big he guy, was there. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think part of it is, you know, and I think this is true for every generation. The people that you watched when you were young and impressionable leave like a big footprint in your in your idea of how things should right. work and what what's a good movie and who's a good actor. I think those people exist now. We just we see them as adults and go, "Oh, Chris Evans, you're a good actor, right. but you're no Well, but they don't they don't present them the same anymore. That it's like it's like the Dean Martins and stuff like that. They had the Christmas shows yeah. and the, you know, and and they were on TV all the time cuz we, you know, back then we had about well, three channels to watch. Three, so, yeah, yeah so they had all the big shows so that deal. So and, and I'm sure that's right. I mean, you know, things have changed. Things are spread out more. We don't see it. But, you know, you don't, you just don't see the, with, and you can't get all those guys together anymore. Anymore, all the agents and the, there's so much stuff. It's and all the, Yeah, and all the rights and everything. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, you go watch a Dean Martin Christmas show and, I mean, they've got 20 of the biggest actors at the time in there coming mm -hmm. in and doing bits. And, yeah. So, I, it, well, just, the whole ability to present those kinds of characters was controlled much more heavily back then. Right. And, and so if, if as an actor, you wanted on TV, you had to come to that, you know, like right. to the Dean Martin show or someplace right. like that. Whereas nowadays, you know, you've got YouTube and Twitter and yeah. Twitch and Facebook, all the regular TV channels and, you know, Paramount and Disney and Amazon Prime and Netflix. It's just so much... The, the the width of the channel that you have to be able to consume media is so much wider. It, it dilutes your experience with any particular person unless you specifically seek them out. Well, and, and that's the reason, I mean, I you know, I don't want to, every time I turn around, I have to buy 20 different shapes. But I like the direction that they're going. I would much rather have the ability to pick five or yeah. six things that I want watch yeah. rather than have a hundred right, and right. ninety seven of them never turn you know I'd rather I, I you know All let's, cart. yes yeah. let's fix that there and, and let cart. those guys be able to put that stuff. I mean the whole reason I signed up for HBO Max I've never had HBO before in my life and they announced the Snyder Cut I'll take that yeah yeah I, I it was it was really different it was First of all, I'm a terrible person to give an opinion about DC Comics. Everything that I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was well done. Yeah. No, it definitely, definitely made a big difference. And set up like the potential for other stuff. I don't think they're going to go that direction. But I mean, that ending scene where there was that, I, I, 
I shouldn't do spoilers. <laughs> so anyway, there's just there was the potential for like follow-on films that I don't think we're gonna get a chance to. See. Um, I have really enjoyed HBO Max. It's been a very, very out of the out of the ones I've got. The uh, I think we've got got Netflix, Hulu, mm -hmm. HBO Max, and uh, we had CBS. Which I had to get rid of. Did you? So here's the reason I had to get rid of that one. I sat down to watch Discovery. I'm paying for CBS before it became Paramount. And during Discovery, during one 50 minute episode of Discovery, I watched five commercials. I'm paying for commercial free. I read the fine print to make sure maybe credit card hadn't declined or something. And I was like, okay, so you may have to watch limited commercials. Yeah. Right, okay, I can live with that because I love Star Trek, right? right? 50 minutes, I watched 10 minutes worth of commercials. Right. I, I just canceled it. I'll buy the DVDs and watch right. Discovery on DVD. Yeah, no, I mean, that was, I, I'm okay with like how Hulu does it. You mm -hmm. know, you watch one at the beginning and then. We totally and, and okay that, with that. Yeah, that yeah. was okay. But uh, there, I, there's just a lot of CBS shows because I like Blue Bloods. Mm -hmm. They've got the new Clarice, Silence mm -hmm. of the Clarice. Not bad. So. Ilmarin doesn't have. You know, there. I, I, some days I would, I, I would be jealous of you. I often think how much more. Of course, I don't watch TV nearly as much. At, at least, it's not. You know, used to right. it was more spread out. Now it's, there'll be a time mm -hmm. one day and one evening out and catch up on all the shows at one. Day. And then I'm done yeah. for the. Other mm -hmm. than just noise. For for my wife and I, it's Sunday evening. So 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 we'll usually. The end of the week, Sunday evening, we'll sit down and watch our favorite shows, casting live. Or we've accumulated so we can. Ilmarin, if you don't have TV, you got to see more painted calves. Come on now, you don't have an excuse. You got all that free time. I want to see some painted calves, especially Kodiak. He's he's bu he's busy putting up inspirational memes on. Facebook. Is he? Is that who does uh, he, that? I get six or seven of them all. Bam, 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 bam. Hmm. <laughs> truth is out. So the truth is out there. Uh, uh, talking about movies. I, yeah, on. we got two off on movies. That's okay. Give everybody something for it. Well, uh, Willow. I enjoy Willow. Willow's a good... What's funny is how, especially with the older stuff, is how me and my wife, um, she spent her early childhood in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Her, her dad worked for airplanes. So they grew up on compounds, right. okay? So for TV, all they had was VHS. So people, it's a routine. So the, she grew up in the same time that she was still watching. They were watching the honeymooners oh, and, really? and stuff, older okay. stuff yeah. like that because that was one. Yeah. So her her childhood and my childhood for the the type of shows we watched right. at the time kind of were yeah phase. they're out of phase. Uh, it's kind of funny. Double from last star. Um. I, Last Starfighter was a great movie mm -hmm. uh, growing up that I really liked to watch. I think it's one that could be done. Uh, it, it could go either bad or good, but I think that, uh, and I believe that they're supposed to be good. I haven't heard that at yeah. all, but yeah, I remember watching that. That was a, uh, that was back in drive in still. We went, we, we, the first time we watched it, I think, was the first week. At the drive-in theater, I think we we probably went a half dozen. Do we still have a the Admiral Twin is still? We go to a drive-in theater. Aren't we? There's one that was right next door here. I uh, so what the that dad. big framework. Yeah, they cut it down. And cut, I don't know. I'm right there. 2020. <clears throat> it was open until.
Cocaine's watching Stargate. Yeah, Stargate was fun. Wife loves it. You know, and a lot of people do. I love the movie. I didn't like the series. Oh. I don't know if it was Sorry. just. I don't know. I'm a. I love Kurt Russell. Mm -hmm. That was part. Of it. Yeah. Using the original guys. Yeah, they couldn't stuff. afford Kurt Russell. I know. I, no, I know. I know <laughs> that it, it is. Um. All right, so we are at nine o'clock. We are at the witching hour. So, uh, anybody, any last minute questions you want us to try to to get on and get in there? Uh, we will try. I, I I I will be pushing stuff out tomorrow. Where it's going to be like chicken with our heads cut off around here. I got to pick people up at the airport. We got to finish up up here. Oh, but we will get there. Bear with us through the weekend. So. We will do our best. And... Swag bag, that's on. I, they were supposed to go up today, um, but because I lost my morning, <laughs> I didn't get them up. So we should have those up tomorrow. They, we, we're, we, we've got everything in. We're trying to get it all straightened out. Um, we've got a little couple of last minute. Uh, what is the limit for free shipping? Uh, $50. And, and if not, it's $10. A flat. We charge a flat $10 shipping. <clears throat> if you you buy $20 worth of stuff, it'll come. Buy a badger. So. Free shipping all day long. Get your badges. Get, badger, get them while they're hot. But make sure that if you buy $40 worth of stuff mm -hmm. and then Pay ten dollars worth of shipping. Don't do that. <laughs> pick out fifty. It's, pick out. Get ten more dollars worth of stuff and get free shipping. I that you would be amazed how often that. I just like. Oh. I mean, you want you almost want to just give them ten dollars. Well, I stuff. used to. I used yeah. to. I used to try to fix it, you know, yeah. and I'd look and you know throw an extra of these or whatever. It happens so much now. They're adults. Yeah, I That's why I can't keep up. Uh, yes, swag bags are $30, or if you buy $100 worth of merchandise, they are free. So, I'm telling you, Badger, a couple of Kodiaks, a couple of Mambas, free swag bag, free shipping. Good to go. So, the $100 is the magic number. <clears throat> and and we will start shipping those out next. Everything is closed <laughs> down for us to finish the show or going going on. Okay, so let's finish it up. Um, you'll probably see us talking about stuff on Facebook if people are asking questions tomorrow or whatever. Mm -hmm. If not, you will see us 10 o'clock Friday morning Central Time at the start of Cav Virtual CavCon. Say good night, James. Good night, James. We're going to go get some dinner and get ready for tomorrow. All right. Take care, guys. <laughs>